Hello. Welcome to the 2024 Pony Awards. I'm so happy to see all of you. And I'm so happy none of you had to spend $5,000 to get in this time. Uh, so, um, oh yeah, sorry, we have an intro reel, I forgot. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 2024 Pony Awards Ceremony. Today, we celebrate this year's outstanding achievements in security. And some, well, not so outstanding ones, all for the first time ever at DEF CON. We hope you enjoy the show. Without further ado, please welcome your host, Ian Roos. All right. <laughs> you can tell we didn't do a dry run. It'll be good though. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much for coming. I'm so happy to see you all here. Uh, we do like maybe a rough show of hands. How many of you are already familiar with the Pony Awards? All right, I should do that backwards. How many of you have never seen the Pony Awards? It's like the same people. Um, okay, so <laughs> the Pony Awards are a annual uh, award show for security research where we try to celebrate both the successes and failures of the security community. Uh, the, the general kind of gist of it is, you know, we have some very good awards, we have some maybe not so good awards, but people tend to kind of appreciate it, roll with it, have fun. Um, the, as a heads up, uh, as we give out the awards today, um, there will very hopefully be people in the crowd who are available to accept the award. If that happens, please come up on stage, we'll give you a horse, and then you can take a couple of minutes in order to uh, talk about uh, the research that you did. Now, something we've run into in the past is not everybody can make it out despite our best efforts. Uh, we are a purely volunteer effort and uh, do not make any money, so we're not flying people out for this yet, but we'd love to get there one day. Um, in the event that uh, the winner is not available, I would love for someone who is maybe familiar with the body of research or the work that they did to come up on stage and give, you know, couple minutes, kind of explain what it is, why it's important. Uh, if you feel like maybe you deserve the pony instead, I, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but um, you can fight over it. Uh, and then, um, yeah, that's sort of the plan. Does that sound good? All right, right on. So, for our first award, I would uh, like to invite uh, the ransomware actor Alf on stage. Hello. I am Elf, also known as Black Hat Ransomware Group. I'm your typical uh, ransomware as a service animal. Hey. <laughs> I know there's been lots of speculation as to how they've let me stateside, but do you think you would get far if you had a six foot tall Russian handler? <laughs> Speaking of the cat getting out of the bag, I ran into the president of CrowdStrike backstage. Hey, listen, Mike is a great guy, huge fan of his work, really. They're true artists over there at CrowdStrike. Truly humbling to see a big tech company putting art and memes first. Let's just say, if I got my paws on 8 million devices and execution in kernel, I would make a, enough ransomware money to maybe afford a CrowdStrike subscription. <laughs> I'm here to present the award for best cryptographic bug. Folks, as a ransomware operator, encryption is near and dear to my heart. And we got some great research here. Neural network aided cryptanalysis, Apple processor, side channel attacks, and hey, UPnP. For those who have ever looked at UPnP security stack, we have an old saying, IP, UP, we all pee on UPnP. <laughs> well, folks, I got to snort some catnip and 
Uh, I got to snort some catnip with some cyber insurance dollars. So let's hear it for these nominees. <laughs> right arrow. What? First up, presenting the nominees for best crypto bug. Breach extraction attacks by Corneropolos, leveraging leakage from cryptographic protocols and compromised credential checking services, specifically Cloudflare's implementation to reconstruct encrypted passwords on servers using cryptographic insights and neural networks. GoFetch, breaking constant time cryptographic implementations using data memory dependent prefetchers by Borishan, a microarchitectural side channel attack that exploits data memory dependent prefetchers on Apple processors to extract secret keys from constant time cryptographic implementations. Blast Radius. Radius, UDP, considered harmful by Nadia. This significant attack targets a major protocol using a powerful, underused vector that exploits the legacy use of MD5, which lacks chosen prefix collision resistance. And the pony goes to... It's hard with pause. Borgen for GoFetch, breaking constant time cryptographic implementations using data memory dependent prefetches. Congratulations. Borchin. Is he here? Are you here? Are you here? <laughs> All right. Nope. All right, it's on now. Okay, so first dry rod, you ready? Is anyone here familiar with this work? Come on. No crypto. No crypto people in the crowd. I understand. It's really difficult. It's all weird math and shit. You sure? All right. Well, I encourage you. Oh, hi. Maybe they need to study math at Deep State University. <laughs> uh, I would encourage all of you to look up this research. Uh, we'll be publishing links to the uh, papers that they're writing, blog posts, all of that online uh, probably in a couple of days when I've actually slept. And uh, yeah. With that, I think we'll move on to the next presenter. All righty. Uh, for the, the presenter for best desktop bug, I'd like to invite uh, Mark Trumpler on stage. Uh, good evening. Well, it's evening somewhere. Uh, and it's Vegas, so there's no clocks. Um, so, yeah, evening. Maybe next year we can do this later in the day. Uh, <laughs> Your dinner jacket <laughs> is excellent. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I can't believe you can see it. Uh, <laughs> I'm Mark Trumpor. I'm the executive director of SummerCon, America's oldest hacker conference, which has been running continuously since 1987. <laughs> Uh, it is our honor to host the Pony Award nominations, and it is my pleasure to introduce the contenders for Best Desktop Bug. In a world where general purpose computing happens everywhere, from the cloud to the door of your refrigerator, Desktop Bug might sound a bit anachronistic. But as recent events have shown, from airline check-in kiosks to the blue sphere of death, Okay, maybe the, the sphere pictures were a hoax, but they were still funny. Um, desktop systems are everywhere, proving that this category is as relevant as ever. Let's take a look at this year's nominees. Here are the nominees for Best Desktop Bug. Ben Barnea's three-episode research on Windows Paths by Nacho's Kernel. Highlighting the complexity of parsing Windows Paths leading to severe consequences like zero-click vulnerabilities in Outlook or Windows Explorer. A Chrome Zero Day caused by improperly triggered audio rendering by 708v1. A long-standing bug in Chrome allows forced real-time audio rendering without user interaction, 
exploited in last year's Tianfu Cup. Byte code breakdown. Unraveling Factorio's Lua security flaws by Daniels B. Exploiting a vulnerability in the Lua implementation of Factorio. Enabling a malicious server to execute arbitrary code on clients, affecting every player. And the pony for best desktop bug goes to 708v1 for a Chrome O'Day caused by improperly triggered audio rendering. Congratulations. All right. I'm going to start just pulling people up at some point. Is anyone familiar with this body of work? Okay. I have used Chrome. Here's what we're going to do. Has anyone done any interesting desktop exploitation, Chrome bug research recently? And you want to maybe pitch your work very briefly. I know you're out there. It's fine. You can come up. I'll call someone out. Just, just, just pick somebody at random. Make them describe some. They're some all very Chrome nervous. Work. I know. Yeah. We we were actually thinking about uh, dropping this category at a certain point because nope. no one uses desktops anymore. It's all in the cloud. No, it's it's all desktops. <laughs> it's it's Mark. It's it's very clearly laptops. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, uh, let's move on to our next category. I know some of you are here, by the way. Okay. For our next category, we have uh, the best mobile bug research of the year uh, presented by uh, Kai. So, hello. Uh, I am very excited to be here primarily because I have another reason to wear this really expensive jacket that I have only had one opportunity to wear before. Uh, I thought the tombstone logs in the back of it would be a little too niche, so bear with me on this. Uh, the state of mobile security has been, I think, steadily improving, and that's kind of commensurate by some of the best researchers fucking off to go audit Ethereum smart contracts or something. Um, but I am really happy to be here and I want to give you guys a little bit of advice. Uh, for any aspiring mobile security researchers out there, pay attention in your complexity theory class. Building Turing machines is no longer just an academic exercise. I also want to say pay attention... I also want to say pay attention in your undocumented hardware feature class. You'll never know when you'll need a PPL bypass. Uh, and with that, uh, my only real move in these situations is I have students and generally I have power over them and threaten to fail them if they don't laugh. So I will fail you if you don't laugh. And the nominees are... I had a button. Here are the nominees for best mobile bug. Operation Triangulation by... Who knows? One of the most sophisticated attacks targeting iPhones, notable for being the first to exploit a hardware feature in iPhones. Gaining kernel code execution on an MTE-enabled Pixel 8 by Man Yue Mo. Exploiting a vulnerability in the ARM Melee GPU to achieve arbitrary kernel code execution and gain root access on an Android phone, even with MTE mitigation enabled. That Samsung Galaxy A bug chain mm -hmm. by Max RB, triggered via USB, allowing code execution in the bootloader, control over Android, and leakage of secrets stored in Trust Zone, affecting many devices in the Galaxy A family. And the winner is... Operation Triangulation. Operation Triangulation, are you out there? I. Anyone want to take credit for this? I would be so happy. Oh my gosh, they're here. Operation Triangulation is in the room. Please, yeah. <laughs> Please come up on stage. I, Would you like to say a few words? I'm just, I'm just here to. I'm not going to take credit. Um, I think it's pretty cool this category because it's mobile, and mobile still has lots of hardware crap put together in it, and this is kind of a great example of it because you've got a core that someone makes and has debug features, and they forget to turn them off. It's awesome. It happens all the time. If you're not into hardware, check it out because there's a lot of wide open doors all over everything in hardware. 
And if we agree that this pony has zero value, there is a possibility I could at least get it back to the folks who discovered and reported it. Um, because uh, it, you know, no sanction violations. If I bring something I, of zero I don't, value, I mean, there's no money attached to this, so I don't yeah, know. So, uh, Winona, don't know. is this illegal? Don't ask. Uh, sorry. <laughs> That's the uh, bug. Th this this that is works. A pony? Pony? That's, yeah. It is a Por pony. Horse yes. are made. It's a okay. gummy bear. You can eat it. Is it clean? Is it clean? Is it? Is it I wouldn't ask. Okay. Well, yeah. Hack on hardware. Hardware's awesome. Um, I'll do my best to see if I can get this to someone who knows. Either side, I don't give a shit. What's that? <laughs> Either end of it. Up to you, man. Well, no, I, not triangulation folks, the Kaspersky votes who found it. Oh, okay. But, you know, they didn't really want the first ones to find it. They were just the ones who saw someone else who yeah, found it. I think they're in another uh, category coming up too. So, oh, they are? Uh, um, I'm pretty happy to, no, no, I'll, you I'll should. stay close to the front. You should, you should give it to them. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Wait, I have to introduce you. All right. Now introducing our presenter for the best song category, Claudia. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I get very excited about this. And also, isn't Ian doing a great job? He is crushing it. It's not easy when you don't really know who's going to be in the audience. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of mystery on both sides here. So you might be asking yourself, best song in the Ponies Award, why? The answer is vibes. <laughs> I think all of us can agree that working in security, you need to generate the right vibes to get to the right goal. You know, when we're running CTFs, you need to have some epic gamer music. Shout out to EDM for powering us through many a late night coding sesh. <laughs> so today it is my honor to talk about who might in the last year have generated those rare vibes that we needed in moments of difficulty. So without further ado, the nominees for best song are the nominees for Best Song 2024, Touch Some Grass by UWU Underground. Kids out here believing what they're told. DX Underground. Code Snail Loads by Lavados. Send back, it's falling back. Right through the network store. The bottom two is ignored. Send back, it's falling back. When I hit the return, it's tied on. Gary is my shadow, bitch, he's going wherever I go. And the pony for best song goes to Uwu for Touch Some Grass. Let's go. A good reminder for us all. Do we have someone? Yes. I awesome. think we have someone to awesome. accept the award. Finally. I mean, who wouldn't want to take credit for this, you know? Nice. Awesome. Uh, hi, my name is Int80. I'm the rapper in a group called Dual Core and also in a group called The Troubleshooters, and also in a group called No Friends, and I am not magical malware girls. However, we do have a collaboration in the mix, and I have been nominated by Uwu Underground to accept this award on their behalf. I will say I get asked a lot as a rapper, uh, what do you think about AI-generated music? And as a rapper, I do not consider myself a real musician because rapping does not require talent. And I actually genuinely love the music that Ooh Underground makes. And so that is why I reached out to them to collaborate. So I'm very excited that they have won this award. Uh, Jonathan Scott can eat my butt from the front. Man wipes his phone and calls it a POC. Hack all the things, touch some grass, and get off the screen. Speaking of mobile researchers, damn. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, would you like to select? Yes. Uh, oh, no. Uh, it's dealer's choice. Okay. Uh, and I will somehow, I don't know the identity of Uwu seems, Underground, but I will ship internationally if needed. This speaks Uwu Underground to me. Grass. Touch grass. Touch grass. Very good point. Yeah. Thank you so much.
All right, wonderful. Next up, we have the pony for most innovative research being presented by Ryan Spears. Welcome to the stage. Good morning, everyone. This category is pretty fun to see. When we go through the nominations for these and basically take away your democratic process behind the scenes, we get to see some truly innovative ideas, as well as, I guess I wasn't supposed to say that part, uh, some truly innovative we ideas. That, we talked about this. <laughs> and those ideas that were already done 20 years ago, and you all are self-nominating and claiming they're still innovative. That's true. There were some in this category of exploiting IP-facing protocols, and that's not innovative, but some of the approaches this year truly were. We had a long section of DNS bugs uh, that, that somebody had fun, I think, making 30 plus CVEs, so good scoring for yourself. There were other attacks against security infrastructure and the new features, which is good. It, it shows the circle of life in this community, right? Some of you worked hard all of last year since the last ponies to help add attack surface in the name of security features. And that's important because otherwise I'd be worried about the future of this category. But thanks to your hard work, we continue to have new innovative attack surface. And so let's see this year's nominations. Here are the nominees for most innovative research. Ahoy Attacks by Benedict Schluter. Introducing a novel method of injecting virtual interrupts into confidential VMs, CVMs, to alter their execution state and break confidentiality. Two-door attack, systematically exploring and exploiting logic, vulnerabilities in DNS response. Pre-processing with malformed packets by Idealeer. Exploiting DNS response pre-processing vulnerabilities to perform DNS cache poisoning within one second leading to the assignment of 33 CVE IDs. Let the cache cache and let the web assembly assemble. Knocking on Chrome's shell by Edward Bochain and Tao Yan. Successfully demonstrated a novel V8 sandbox escape technique at Pone to Own Vancouver 2024, setting a new precedent in V8 exploitation. So let's see. And the pony goes to, for most innovative research, Edward and Tao for let the cash cash and let the web assembly assemble, knocking on Combs' shell. I think someone stood up back there. Are you going to the bathroom or are you coming up? You... Oh, shoot, they're here. This is so exciting. Congrats, come on. Thank you so much. You can, you can give a talk. What do you want to do? Come on. Hey, hi, everyone. <laughs> um, so, yeah, basically, uh, uh, our research is based on uh, the release of a new sandbox for the VA JavaScript engine. Uh, that was uh, the beta release was actually uh, released in March of this year. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> we needed to actually bypass it for Pontoon, and um, uh, so new features were involved, and we need to actually find new ways to bypass that sandbox. That's what we did at, at Pontoon. We did a talk to Black Hat uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, the slides are available on the Black Hat website, and uh, the video will be available also soon, I guess. So uh, just check it out. And yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm next. How about that? Oh, this is a fun one. I'm really excited for this one. You guys don't even know what's about to happen. <laughs> Next up, we have the Pony Award for Most Epic Fail. Now, we kind of snitched on ourselves because I really couldn't help myself. Um, the, the, if you're following on Twitter, you know who the winner is already. Uh, 
that ended up happening because uh, normally we present the nominees, as Mark said earlier, at SummerCon, and this happened like a day beforehand. And so we kind of just ended up scrapping all the nominees and uh, made an executive decision uh, when you knock off like every airline. <laughs> and now, here are the nominees for most epic fail. LOL. Today's adversaries move fast. CrowdStrike moves faster. CrowdStrike, we stop breaches. Wow, you're a winner. How about that? Well, do we have anyone here who would like to accept this Pony Award? Oh my goodness gracious, we do. Uh, which, uh, I don't know if these, yeah, the, uh, you can pick. I think these are too small. I think we need another, <laughs> I think we might need a different award. Look at that. I can open the envelope if we need to, but uh, <laughs> please, it's all yours. Can I put it down there? Yeah. That's a big trophy. Uh, hey everyone, Mike Santonis, president of CrowdStrike. Uh, <laughs> definitely uh, not the award to be proud of receiving, but uh, I think the team was uh, surprised when I said straight away that I would come and get it because uh, we got this horribly wrong. We've said that uh, a number of different times. And it's uh, super important to own it when you do things well. It's super important to own it when you do things uh, horribly wrong, which we did in this case. Uh, the reason why I wanted the trophy is I'm heading back to headquarters. Uh, I'm going to take the trophy with me. It's going to sit pride of place because I want every crowd striker who comes to work to see it. Because, you know, our goal is to protect people. And uh, we got this wrong and I want to make sure that everybody understands these things can't happen and that's what this community is about. So from that perspective, I will say thank you and I will take the trophy and we'll put it in the right place and uh, make sure everybody sees it. So thank you. See, people are mad at us for giving out like negative awards, but then you get people like really, you know, taking it and speaking to it. It's good. I'm very happy. Um, all right, let's keep moving along. Next up, we have the pony for most underhyped research being presented by Ang Kui, the CEO of Red Balloon Security and one of our sponsors. All right, all right. I am Ang, and um, this is the word for the best research, right? No, it's the most underrated research. Um, as a recipient of, of this <laughs> years and years ago, I have some things to say, but in the audience, show of hands, has anyone else received this award in the past? Nope, we all work at Wendy's, we got jobs, you losers, all right? Um, so some of the things that I want to, you know, for example, I want to give examples of really innovative, impactful things that have changed our lives that most of us don't even care or know about. So I was reading this paper that is also very underrated. It's the breeding behavior of blind Mexican cave fish uh, in river dwelling cavities of, of types, right? That's important. That's literally going to change the world and stuff. Um, some other examples, Gregor Mandel, right? He like made peace, you know, do their business uh, and created the theory behind genetics and hybridization. Awesome, important work. Uh, people gave him a high five for that 16 years after he died. So, you know, there's always something to look forward to. And then, uh, you know, not all, well, also the uh, plate tectonics, right? Remember for the thousands of years, uh, 2,000, a, a thousand people thought the, the world was always the way it is, even though, you know, even any five-year-old can look at like all the continents and say like, if I squish them together, don't they all kind of fit? Right? So yeah, that was the paper that was written, like, let me check in, uh, in 1596. And it was officially accepted in 1959 that plates move and the round thing, you know, they shift and there used to be Pangea, right? So 
Uh, last example, um, the wonderful man, very, very, very underrated, uh, Thomas Midgley. Midgley. Does anybody know who Thomas Midgley is? Show of hands. All right. Underrated indeed. This is a man in one decade invented leaded gasoline and chlorofluorocarbons, right, to make the world kick ass. So, you know, he's pretty underrated too, right? So, in that context, um, let's look at some of the most underrated research of this year. And finally, the nominees for most underhyped research. See no eval, runtime dynamic code execution in Objective C by Code Colorist. Highlighting a technique for dynamic code execution in Objective C used in several iOS exploits since 2021. Dangerous import, source forge patches, critical code vulnerability by Scry. Vulnerability in Apache Allura, potentially compromising source forge and spreading malware to millions of users. Flexo by Ping Lun Wang, Ricardo Pacaniella, Riyad Wabai, and Fraser Brown. Showcasing a binary unpacker operating within a micro-architectural weird machine, making malware analysis significantly harder. All right, and uh, Pony goes to... Uh, cha -cha 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 -cha. One second, one second. One second. Uh, C, no, C, no, eval, runtime dynamic code execution, objective C. Anybody, uh, anybody here? Anybody here? Anybody? Uh, uh, bathroom? No, he's, no. he's going to the bathroom. Wait, yes, yes. Oh my gosh, let's go. What are you forgetting? <laughs> Come sir, on. No running at the pool, oh, sir. Oh, picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're recording this, so it's all right. Come on. Uh, I'm not sure what order. If you want to talk about it because you're yeah. excited or you want to grab a pony out, uh, yeah, talk, 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 go, go. It was yeah. actually, I'm taking it on a friend on my behalf. Yeah, they, Zhou Zhi, they, the, the, the Zhou Zhi won the award and I'm taking it on behalf of him. Yeah, actually, I was a previously winner in the 2022 and I'm taking this on behalf of, the, of my friend. Yeah, he won this. Congratulations to him. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank Ma. you Thank so you much. Ma. Yeah. He also says, thanks, Mom. Uh, yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. That's another thing. Like, I, I love it when, like, you know, accept it on a friend's behalf, you know, make it so we don't have to mail a horse. Fun fact, um, designing these things. So uh, these were all manufactured certainly not using any type of child labor in a undisclosed basement in the DC metro area. Um, paint fumes, oof. Uh, the, um, I'm in New York. Have you ever had to buy 11 My Little Ponies off Amazon? Do you know what that does to your ad targeting? <laughs> I do, it's not great. Um, uh, and then the, the best part was uh, I, taking all of them and shoving 11 My Little Ponies into a backpack and then taking the train down because I really didn't want to explain it to a TSA agent. Uh, but you get a really weird thrill just thinking like nobody on this train knows I have 11 My Little Pony horses in my backpack right now. Up until they were buying podiums for it and demanded that I open it up and pull one out and start measuring it on the train, which I had to do. So thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, um, moving right along. We have the Pony for Best Privilege Escalation being presented by Nika. Hi, DEF CON. Standing here today, I feel very privileged to present this category, but it's this category that takes that to a new level, a level we're told we're not allowed to reach. But rules are for suckers, and this year's nominees are rule breakers. Privilege escalation, geez, there we go. Privilege escalation is an exploitation technique that is used to gain access to resources or functionality a user should be restricted from accessing. 
it's like when you make friends with a bouncer and cut the line at Burkine. Yeah. <laughs> the bouncer is the trust boundary. And you and your crew look at each other and go, lol, we're going in anyway. It's about saying fuck you and showing that your exploit is sicker than whatever code the devs push to prod. Privilege escalation is about breaking into spaces where the doors are locked, the glass ceiling feels stratospherically high, and the guards are ruthless. In the Olympics, people always want to reach the next level, earn the privilege of a gold medal. Here, we have people who can cheat the best, whisper the best incantations, cast the best spells. This category is for those who put in the best effort to slide the scale in their favor for best privilege escalation, for staying lifted by any means possible, scored on style. I'm going to defer to the artist known as D-Noise for some spiritually enlightening verse on the hallowed topic of privesque. <laughs> when I'm told I'm offensive, I need to check my privilege and the authority system. Here are the nominees for best privesque. What do I do? And now, the nominees for best privilege escalation. Unplugging XHCI, an enabling step on the road to VMware VM escape by Victor V. Detailing a successful VMware workstation escape exploit from the Tianfu Cup 2023 by removing the XHCI USB controller within the virtual machine, triggering a use after free vulnerability. A registry window to kernel memory by M. Jerkzik. Highlighting memory corruption in Windows registry handling, providing direct access to kernel memory and turning Rigidit into a kernel memory editor. Windows streaming service UAF used at Own to Own Vancouver by Chompy, exploiting an improper object reference count update in the Microsoft kernel streaming server, causing a use after free for a virtual table call, earning $15,000 at the competition. And the pony goes to... Chompy for Windows Streaming Service UAF. Okay, I don't have anything prepared. Uh, didn't even know if I was gonna come. I. Uh, I don't know who decided to make this at 10 a.m. on Saturday after DEF CON, but I'm here, a little underdressed. Everyone looks amazing. Um, don't have that much to say other than I'm super grateful for my uh, management and my team that support me in allowing me to do public research. I know that's not a common thing, so I get to share uh, all my work publicly. And uh, shout out to the other people that were nominated, Victor V and Drew, who are legends, uh, stiff competition, and also to uh, my husband that puts up with me when I don't, on the days I don't find bugs. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Chompy. Um, all right. I could tell there's a crowd favorite out there, too. Like, you guys kind of lay your souls away. Um, let's see. Next up, we have the Pony Award for Best Remote Code Execution being presented by Ryan again. I'm so glad this is still a category as well. And I'm told I can't say much. So there's all types of RCE. And there were a lot of logic and web app bypasses this year. And a lot of people asked me, do those count? Ye yes, they're remote. That's so fine. But we also um, all too often talk about web drive buys and zero and one clicks. And this year, we had a lot of nominations that luckily 
uh, took advantage of things like Exchange and just parked it in your inbox and let the computer click it over and over and over for you. And then we, of course, had nominations of the classic patterns. And everyone made sure this year, again, thank you to the community for leaving in buffer overflows, use after freeze. We and the nominees appreciate your dedication to these patterns. Otherwise, this could get boring or more interesting. So now let's see for the nominees. Next up, here are the nominees for best remote code execution. Jump Server Pre-Auth RCE Exploit Full Chain by Laliot and Jinyang Peng. Exploiting insecure random number logic in Python to achieve authentication bypass, resulting in pre-auth RCE. Half measures and full compromise. Chain of three vulnerabilities to Pwn Exchange by Piotr Bazidlo. This Microsoft Exchange RCE chain consists of three vulnerabilities, enabling RCE by any domain user. The Overlooked Pattern, Path to Pre-Auth RCE by Root OX Koshel, a critical pre-authenticated remote code execution vulnerability affecting all Windows versions from Server 2008 to Server 2022 and Windows 10 and 11. So the pony for best remote code execution goes to, let's see, Root OX Koshel for the overlooked pattern CVE 2024 380 path to pre auth RCE. Sorry, I stopped using it. Are we back now? Okay. I stopped using it, so I don't blame them. Um, the, are you here? No? That's maybe good because we're running short on time. All right, let's move right along. <laughs> we'll send it over to them. All right, next up for the lamest vendor response, we have Winona. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, my name is Winona. I'm a former reverse engineer now in law school, but I am not anyone's lawyer yet. Um, don't, don't tell me all the shit you do, Ian. Um, so, first off, um, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing the lamest vendor response. Although I do want to say thank you guys all for coming. Like, the hacker community is so wonderful. Like, who else is going to come all the way out to the devil's armpit of America and go party all night and then show up to, at 10 a.m. for an award show with people who are as hungover as you guys are? Um, so, uh, there's also Gatorades up here if y'all want them. Uh, I brought some of them uh, just for you. Um, on the lamest vendor response, the reason why we give this award out is that when a company makes business decisions that runs against the hacker ethos, we want to call that out. Things that are damaging, things that actively result in us having to clean up their stuff, or even just things that are just in poor form. Um, that being said, uh, you know, it says, hey guys, not cool, and it hopefully will pressure them to change their habits a little bit. Of course, the hacker community is super diverse. We have a lot of different opinions. And if you don't agree with some of the nominees up here, I truly hope that we hear from you next year. Please tell us who you think your lamest vendor is and we will gladly bring them up here. Um, so now let's hear the nominees. Hit what? Yeah. Arrow? Oh. The nominees for lamest vendor response are Linux CVE CNA. The Linux kernel team is giving every bug a CVE, not just the vulnerabilities. What could go wrong? Xiaomi's own to own infrastructure fail. Xiaomi disabled parts of its infrastructure, including its global app store, to stop own to own contestants from pwning. Kaspersky antivirus, trying to claim a bug bounty from Apple for triangulation, can't pay out sanctioned entities, guys. Sorry. Sucks to suck. And the Pony Award goes to Xiaomi for their Pony to Own infrastructure fail. Come on up, please. Thank you. No, no Xiaomi friends? Nobody? Nobody? All right, we're really running low on time, so we're just going to keep moving. All right. I also have the distinct oh, no, no, honor. Again. Yeah, it's me again. Uh, I also have the distinct honor of giving out the Epic Achievement Award, um, which again, this is such an awesome group of people, and we're all out here trying to do the best that we can uh, to protect or not 
And um, what? Oh, we're gonna we're just gonna move it. Here are the nominees for epic achievement. It's six months. Discovery of the X Seed Backdoor by Andres Freund. Discover the backdoor in X Seed Oodles while troubleshooting performance issues, ultimately saving several Linux distros. Windows down date, downgrade attacks using Windows updates by Elon Leviev. Uncovered a critical flaw in Windows updates that allows attackers to downgrade files, enabling privilege escalation and disabling VBS. Flexo by Ping Lun Wang, Ricardo Pacaniella, Riyad S. Wabai, and Fraser Brown. Showcasing a binary unpacker operating within a microarchitectural weird machine, making malware analysis significantly harder. And the most epic achievement award of the ponies goes to Andres Freund for the discovery of the XC backdoor. Are you here? I really hope you would be here because I really like this work. Uh, by the way, um, honorable shout out to the Windows Down Day guys. That like was really actually pretty cool research. Um, the okay, so um, we are getting towards the end. Uh, we don't always give out. Uh, this award, but uh, due to extenuating circumstances, um, this year we are giving out a uh, Pony Awards Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, and we are giving it to Sophia D'Antoine. Uh, many of you may be unaware, uh, but uh, Sophia uh, passed away earlier this year. Um, those of you familiar with uh, Margin Research or the Pony Awards are likely aware that it wasn't just me doing this these past few years, it was doing it with Sophia. Um, and I can confidently say that myself, the community, the country, and quite unironically the world would be a worse place if not for what she achieved in her life. Uh, I can't talk about some of them but uh, the ones I can are too numerous to detail, so uh, I will simply ask that you all take a lesson with you that I received from her, which is to take care of each other and stay curious. Uh, so speaking of uh, curiosity, here is a curious and delightful and smart uh, individual. I'd like to uh, welcome Sophia's sister and the president of Margin Research, Claudia D'Antoine, up to accept the Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you, everyone. Um, I know we're running a little short on time, but I just wanted to, to thank everyone here at probably the largest conference I've been to in the last couple of months following my sister's death. Um, whether any of you knew her as Sophia, as Calaquendi, um, through her work in hacking for Soju, um, doing training with the folks at Binary Ninja, um, or even her work on a lot of policy stuff. Um, she interacted with most, if not all, elements of what this conference stands for. And it's a great honor to be accepting this on her behalf. Um, thank you all very much. All right, well, um, that's, uh, that's all folks. Uh, thank you so much for coming to the uh, 2024 Pony Awards. Uh, before you head out, I do really want to call out and thank uh, our sponsors, Margin Research, Red Balloon Security, and the SummerCon Foundation, as well as the multitude of people who helped out. Uh, yo, folks, come on, hey. Come on, herd, herd, herd the cats, let's go, Alpha Swell. <laughs> um, we've got uh, Neil Durkin, Claudia D'Antoine, Mark Trumpor, Dawn Bolsonaro, the entire Pony Awards construction crew, every presenter, uh, the nominees, the winners, uh, and honestly, most of all, all of you uh, for coming out at 10 a.m. on a Saturday at DEF CON. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much. We hope to see you next year. Have a good DEF CON. <laughs>